What would, how would David Attenborough do a year? Here we are with a majestic bass player about to share his secrets of slap, the lesser spotted divine. <laughs> Hey guys, how's it going? Scott Devine back here with another video for you and today we're going to be looking at what in terms of like beginner and intermediate bass players, right, playing slap bass, this is the number one mistake they make, right? And I'm going to be showing you a really cool exercise um, to, to get into alleviating this issue that I see with bass players time and time again. But before we do that, I should say huge apologies guys. This dark glass amp that we were giving away last week, I forgot to give it away. I forgot to choose a winner. So we're gonna be doing this in this video as well. So if you entered in this competition to, to win this dark glass uh, beast of an amp, it's the uh, Microtubes 900. If you entered to win that, I'm gonna be drawing that winner in this lesson, not drawing him. <laughs> Is that what it's called, drawing? <laughs> also, while I've got you, I was just thinking while we're setting up today, um, like we've been doing some cool giveaways recently. We're doing the dark glass stuff. We're, I'm sure we gave away something else dark glass as well. We did the sire bases. This is the last of the sire bases left, unfortunately. <laughs> With all these giveaways that we've been doing, I wanted to ask you guys, who should we reach out to? To who would, what would be the ultimate giveaway for you guys? That's what I'm trying to say. Like what base would blow your mind if we had it on Scott's Bass Essence, on the Scott's Bass Essence channel as a giveaway? which bass would blow your mind or what piece of gear, right? So let me know in the comments and, uh, and I'll try and hook that up. You never know, it might work out. Anyway, so let's get into this number one slap mistake. By far the number one mistake or issue that I see beginner and intermediate slap players or people trying to get into, into the old slappy slappy. <laughs> So the number one mistake I see is with the slap hand technique. What you'll see people doing is using the whole arm, which is fine, right, to, to slap, but without any rotation of the forearm. Now I'm gonna really try and do, what should I try? I'll try and play a riff. Um, I can't even play like that. But essentially I'm not rotating the arm at all, it's just, it's just this. So, and it, you just don't have enough bounce, basically. It, it doesn't give you any bounce. To get that, that bounce, you know, that bounce that you need when you're playing slap bass, to get that bounce, you need to have this rotation of the forearm that's really gonna help you out. And to get that into your, into your technique is gonna be a real key to get in the, the slap technique down and into your, integrated into your plane. So to do this, I, a couple of, I had a couple of um, tips from, from my teachers in the past, and probably the two that have really stuck with me, both were from Gary Willis, which is weird because Ga I've never actually seen Gary Willis slap. Has anybody else seen Gary Willis slap? But anyway, when I was younger, I went to study with Gary Willis over in Barcelona, blew my mind, obviously, um, and, Weirdly enough, he now Gary is now a faculty member at Scott's Bass Lessons. Check that out. How, how weird is that? Amazing. <laughs> anyway, so the two tips that Gary gave me to do with this right hand technique, right, is the first thing is imagine this, this rotation of the forearm, like grabbing a doorknob and ro rotating your arm. That's the movement that you want. So I'm keeping this part of the arm still and then just rotating that back and forward. And then the other tip that he gave me is flip your bass on like upside down and just practice it against the back of your bass. Because you don't really want to be involving notes at this point. If you can't do this, you don't want to be involving notes because they're just going to get in the way, right? So we'll just forget about notes and anything to do with that right now. And we'll just do this. And it's just getting that bounce. And what I'm doing is I'm striking it with that area of the thumb as well, that bony knuckly bit there on the thumb. And then I'm not just aimlessly you know, hitting the bass. I'm trying to put some rhythm into it. So me personally, and what we'll do is, I'll show you this with notes as well. So maybe one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And trying to accent the one. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, and now do it with fours. One, two, three, four. 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 
And if you're doing this right, you should be really relaxed. Like this part of my arm is so relaxed. And I can actually just keep that up quite long. It's kind of like, kind of like bouncing your leg. You know what I mean? When you bounce your leg like that, it's kind of that type of thing, but with your thumb. Now, once you've got that down and you're making sure that you're rotating your arm and you've got the, the thumb going, that bounce, then it's time to start looking at doing it with notes. And you can do the same thing. Just take it like a G, for instance, like this. We could do threes on the G. One, two, three, 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 all fours, one, two, three, four, 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 one, two, three, four. Okay, just to get that bounce and make sure that we're not hitting any of the other strings when we're doing it because that's the thing with slapping it's so easy to um, like hit the other strings that you don't want to be hitting when you're doing it so once you get that down then start incorporating the pop into it which you're going to do just by you know by popping the the actual uh, with the index finger of the plucking hand so you, let's do threes again one two three one two three one two three one two three Or fours. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Just to get that just and we're all the only thing we're doing here is concentrate on that movement, right? It's okay to do all this stuff, right? Later on, once once you've figured out this, because you're never gonna be able to do that stuff if you haven't got this rotation down in the forearm, right? And just and a key thing as well. When you are practicing this stuff, try and do it on different strings as well, just to get that into the exercise, right? Because it's once you've got it down on the on the E string, well then doing it on the A string is a little harder because you've got the E string to contend with, okay? So then you want to look at altering the actual angle of your thumb as well. So it could be on here, like you'll see some pl flea, for instance, right? Plays like this, thumb right down. Okay, which is great for his style, uh, but there are limitations that you'll run across if you have got that. So I'm not telling you not to do it. If you want to play like that, you play like that, right? But if you're looking at guys like, like Marcus Miller, Victor Wooten and stuff like that, then you'll want to have more your thumb more round like this more than that. So more like I am like kind of like an old school... I kind of, I, I kind of learnt like that and then I've kind of rotated it around as the years have gone by. If I was starting out all again, I'd probably go for more of a, a you know, getting that, that finger under here kind of thing, because it definitely gives you more, more flexibility with double thumbing and stuff like that, because that's really hard to get down if your thumb's like that. In fact, it's impossible. The only way you're gonna do double thumbing is when it, with your thumb's like this, so you can go down and then up, right? So do practice it on the different strings. And then when you get down to the D and G as well, a little tip for you, if you just, if you listen to, for instance, if I do that on the G string, it sounds really crap, right? It's kind of pingy. It's because you need to go through the string. I'm actually, I'm not bouncing off that G string, I'm going through. Check out Victor Wooten. He's the guy that I actually saw doing that. And I was like, oh, that's why your G string sounds like it's popping so much. Because he's actually going through the string. Marcus Miller as well goes through that G string and doesn't just bounce off it. So again, guys, I don't want to get into that too much because I don't want to derail the conversation we're having right now, which is obviously about this, the rotation of the forearm. But it's all stuff to keep in mind. Go through them simple exercises that I've given you and make up your own, right? I did this. I got these like simple exercises like that I've shown you today. And then I ran with it and made up my own kind of, you know, little exercise. I'm not gonna even tell you what that is because that's your job to go and investigate it, okay? It's your job to come and invest, go and investigate that and find out your own exercise because that route of self-discovery is going to help you so much more than me just force feeding you these exercises, right? Oh, here's another exercise, here's an exercise. I wanna start you off with an idea and then I want you to go and develop that idea on your own. Now, let's do this gla dark glass giveaway thing. Let get this straightened up a bit. Okay guys, so apologies that I'm doing this giveaway late. Uh, I've got 
you know, I've got kids, I've got two kids, two and four years old, my life is complex. Okay, so what I do here to, to get the winner, so it's fair, is I just get the URL and then I dump this in, I dump it in a little bit of software called something else. There we go. Okay, so the winner is Zed Parham. Okay, so that is the winner of the dark glass head. Um, that will be on its way to you, or an email will be, to get your address, and then we'll fix that up. Now guys, thanks again for watching this lesson, and remember, let us know in the comments who you want to um, SBL to hook up with to do a giveaway for you guys, and it would, like, let us know who would blow your mind the most. Take it easy, and I'll see you in the shed. Are you on about Jungle Boogie, or Jungle Book? Jungle book. I'm on about Jungle Book. <laughs> <laughs> I wanna be like you. Whoa, 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 where are you going? If you haven't subscribed to the Scott's Bass Lessons channel yet here on YouTube, click the link, subscribe. I release two videos like this every single week. You can also check out our other videos over there. And if you've not checked out scottsbasslessons.com membership, check it out. You can grab your 14-day free trial over there.